Alola friends, Dapper Driver here, um, and welcome to the channel. Uh, we are going to start going over our Shining Legends cards um, here first on the PTCGO. Uh, so we're probably going to start with number one, Bulbasaur. Uh, so we put it, put together a deck here with Bulbasaur. So we're going to test out that and on the versus ladder, and I guess we'll just go down the line into the other grass types. You might see Venusaur in some of these other decks due to the fact that it is just has an amazing ability. And oh I did want to add one of these guys in here though since I've recently pulled him as a one uh a one of attacker. Uh I think the way to do it is one less grass energy for a, a Genesect. So we'll go through, uh, maybe what I'll do is, see, see this one is Venusaur Lorantis, so I'll do Venusaur Lorantis first. I might skip some of these lesser known ones that aren't very good, like Carnivine or Breloom, but then I might combine Shaman and Verizian Genesect together, and then I'll move on to the Fire types. But uh, I mean, I'll probably just do a couple of these videos until Crimson Invasion comes out. There's a... Uh, a few weeks until that, I'll try to do the big GXs that I have, and I'll try a few other quirky decks, uh, like Marshadow Jinx or something like that, but uh, a few Shining decks as well, and I'd love to put uh, Gen uh, Arceus in this one, but it's not uh, really possible. But uh, well, let's go ahead, we'll go over the deck now, uh, I don't want to take too much time, but... We're, we're centering this deck around Venusaur here, that jungle totem, each basic grass energy you're, that uh, you put on the field. Uh, each basic grass energy attached to your Pokemon provides two grass energy. You can't apply more than one jungle totem at a time, but you don't need to. So, what that means is I put two grass energies on Venusaur, and Venusaur can attack with Solar Beam. Because one grass e energy equals two grass energy, and one grass energy equals two grass energy, equaling the cost of Solar Beam. So we're playing around with that. Of course, we need our three Bulbasaurs to be able to evolve into Venusaur. We have one Ivysaur and uh, two Venusaur because it is a support Pokemon and not the main attacker. Now, moving on to the main attacker, we have to start out with Fomantis. Synthesis is a great starting attack. If you start with Synthesis, you can get an extra energy on the board and get rolling quicker. Uh, we have Sunny Day Lorantis to boost that damage, you know. We have three of them, so if we have all three of them down, we're, our grass types are going to do 60 more damage. Which means for Solar Beam on Lorantis, it's going to do... Uh, yeah, Solar Beam on Lorantis is, can do up to 140. Uh, Venusaur can do up, up to 150. And then a Big Lorantis, Flower Supply can do 100. And Solar Blade can do 180 which is, uh, this is going to be the main uh, big attacker is Lorantis GX, and we'll be able to secondary attack with Lorantis and Venusaur if necessary. Uh, we also have, so we have two big Lorantis GXs in this deck, and then we also just threw in Shining Genesect for that Gaia Blaster in Energy Reload. Uh, it's just going to be a good secondary attacker, one prize attacker that can hit for big numbers and make it a seven prize card game. Uh, we also have two Tapu Leles for that general Wonder Tag support. Be able to search out for our Bridget Turn 1 that is absolutely necessary. And then also our Sycamores, Guzmas, anything we need throughout the game. Lele can grab it for us out of the deck. Uh, we have, it looks like we have two Field Blowers. Uh, three could be good, useful to be perfectly honest because... Uh, if we had three, we're definitely not going to have our ability shut off. We're a super ability-reliant deck, so if we face up against Garbodor and his, its ability to shut off our abilities makes it very difficult to continue rolling. Heavy Ball, we want to get out that Ivysaur. Venusaur, it is just, Heavy Ball just really helps with that consistency to be able to pull that out and evolve into Venusaur as early as turn two, um, as late as turn three. So it's really useful to have these two heavy balls here. We also have one nest ball so we can get down those basics. Either Bulbasaur, Fomantis, uh, Genesect, 
to be able to uh, get those energy, start uh, boosting up those energies on it. We have uh, four rare candies, I believe. Yes, four rare candies. Because we want to be able to evolve Bulbasaur immediately. Uh, so we're playing four Bulbasaur, four Bulbasaur, four rare candies to get Bulbasaur Venusaur uh, as soon as possible. Four Ultra Balls for general uh, support in the deck. Discard two cards from your hand. Draw, uh, pick a Pokemon from your deck and put it into your hand. This works for anything in our deck. It's good to pick out Lele's to be able to bridge it turn one, stuff like that. Speaking of Bridget, here's two of them. We're using two bridges because we want to get Bulbasaur for Mantis for Mantis down as soon as possible to be able to start hitting four numbers. Guzma is in here for two of them, I believe. Yeah, we have two Guzmas uh, for to be able to pull something out of the bench that has a little bit of damage on it. We want to be able to knock it out, take it out. Um, and get those prize cards. One Lily for general draw support in case we don't have what we need. Lily can give us an extra two cards if we don't want to discard anything. We have 4N, I believe. Yeah, 4N to be able to shuffle back everything and get it back later in the game. Uh, three Sycamore for general draw support. Discard your hand and draw seven cards when you need to. We try not to use Sycamore all the time. If we can keep our resources, we will. We have one Sophocles um, as well for general draw support. Discard two cards from your hand and draw four cards. This is useful when you already have your Venusaur set up. You don't need your Bulbasaur's Ivysaur's anymore. Um, but you still need energies or tools or something. Sophocles can help out with that by discarding the cards you don't need and giving you cards you do need. Uh, and I believe we're rounding it out with three choice bands, two float stones, and 11 energies. Three choice bands just so we can boost that damage on Lorantis GX to be able to take those one hit KOs. Um, people are really surprised when Lorantis comes out because they they don't remember it. To be honest, it's been too long. It's one of the first GXs. It's not it's not relevant anymore. But it still can hit those numbers, which is great with choice band. Uh, also, float stones in case Venusaur gets stuck in the active. Uh, Lele gets stuck in the active, stuff like that. We don't want stuff stuck. Uh, we want to be able to attack with our uh, ones we want. And then 11, uh, 11 grass energy, which is more than enough because with, with Venusaur out in the field, that equals 22 grass energies, which means Lorantis GX's Chlorocyte GX does 50 damage times the amount of grass energy. So you put one grass energy on it with... Venusaur on the bench and it is doing 100 damage. You put two on it, it is doing 200 damage, which is amazing. So let's go ahead, we'll copy this to the clipboard here, and we will get into some matches. What did I save this at? Lorantosaur Jack? That's not right. Um, hashtag Lorantosaur. So let me know if you guys like this deck. You can put hashtag Lorantosaur in the comment section uh below and we got the gold venusaur and the bulbasaur sleeves so that's good lorantosaur let's go with this lorantosaur star lorantosaur okay so let's go to the ladder where it says versus go get rid of fire roasted marshmallows and uh go to lorantosaur lorantosaur or could it be called vena Venerantis, Venerantis, Venomantis, that's what it's called, Venomantis, that's what it would be, right? I don't know. But we're playing Raph, Raphael, Walmaral, some Walmaral, I guess. So we won the coin flip, we do want to go first. We have evolution lines, we need to get out a sap, and we did not draw a basic. All of everything that evolves, but nothing that doesn't. Or everything that can't evolve anymore. We are facing the one and only multiple, uh, tons of everything, um, Gardevoir. But I'm going first. Why did they get to choose their active first? So they're probably going to have a Ralts. But we're going to be able to Fomantis it up, bridge it first turn. And uh, get an extra energy on the board. So we'll probably pull out that Genesect. So that we can get that extra energy onto Genesect. I'm not going to start that on the bench. 
Yep, we are facing off against Ralts. Go ahead, get that Bridget, since we do play two. We play two in case one gets prized. Bridget it up, get a Bulbathor, a Lorantis, and probably Genesect. We'll put, oh, we can't do that yet. So we'll just put an energy on Genesect then. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw the Choice Band down on it as well. And we will wait till next turn to put another energy down. We can also evolve right into Ivysaur, which is kind of sweet. That means we'll have a full evolution line there rather than the rare candy Venusaur like normal. Field Blowering, that's good. Got it to waste. Got them to waste that first turn. And we get End, which helps us out a lot. Oh, we had our outs already, but there we go. We got the Venusaur. We got the turn to Venusaur, which is a nice. And then we can synthesis onto Genesect to get even more power on the board. This opponent is probably thinking Genesect's my main attacker right now, but it's not. It's not. We even got a second choice band. So even if that does evolve into Gardevoir, we're going to be able to hit it for huge numbers right away. Because if each grass energy is worth 2, 20 times the amount of energy. So it would be 40 times the amount of energy. So we'll put 2 energies on it and it'll be plus 40. Plus 40. So plus 80 plus 50 is 130. Yeah, it, it, it's gonna build up fast. We got that that last Lorantis or Fomantis. Let's get that heavy ball. Grab a Venusaur. Show off a little bit with our hyper rare uh, rare candy. Get the Venusaur down. Go ahead and put an energy on uh, the little Fomantis. We can toss down this as well. I would end, but I don't like seeing three cards so we're just going to synthesis this turn pull an energy out and put it onto Genesect and Genesect is ready to roll it's going to be hitting for 40 80 plus 50 130 right now 160 against a GX, and if I throw more energy down, it'll be hitting for 200 on a GX. With just a choice band attached to it, which is pretty amazing. Abysmal hand. Okay, so now I can end next turn, unless they end me. Rare candy up to that Gardevoir, I am happy about that. As long as they don't have a Guzma. <laughs> they definitely do not like my choice bands, but I'm happy to see them wasting their field blowers. Secret Spring onto that Gardevoir. Has so much energy. And Lele for probably a Guzma, right? You in a Guzma, or are you going to uh, Sycamore here? It is a Sycamore. Okay, good. They're not going to take out the Genesect. They're going to take out the Fomantis. That's the only way they could have shut me down right there. Is 180 damage. Now, I think I have three choice bands. I could be wrong, but we're about to find out. Because Genesect's going to be hitting for numbers here. Go ahead and toss that energy down on Genesect. Roll N. Lower their hand size. Raise ours. And we will boost that damage just ever so slightly. Throw down that third Fomantis. And I think we're going to be shy by 10 damage, guys. That field blower mattered. So we're just going to Gaia Blast here for 220 damage. Oh, actually 190. Why is 190? Shouldn't be 190. 
Each of those is worth, that's 120 plus 50. 170 plus 20 is 190. Okay, so my math was way off. We would have missed it by 10 with the choice band. That's what it was. So I need the choice band and another energy, actually. I wasn't as close as I thought I was. Hopefully, Raphael does not have a uh, Ace of Roller here, because that would just be like, ugh, really? That would set me back. If he gets an Ace of Roller here. Ultra Ball for Lele for Ace of Roller. And I'm curious if uh, the grass equals double for them. So this is about to tell me that. So they are hitting for 30, 60, 90, 120. So it should be 2... 240 against Genesect. But if it's... If each of those equal double, then it's going to be 360, I believe. I actually think he's going to hit for 360 here. So we'll see if it's 360 or if it's uh, 240. That'll tell us if uh, Venusaur's ability only activates on your turn or if it's on your opponent's turn as well. Oh, they messed up my math. 270. So 270 means that each of those is worth... So 30, 60, 90. 30, 60, 90 is 180. 30, 60, 90 is 270. So those do equal uh, that much for both parties. Okay. That's what I need to know. Alright, so here we're going to... We don't need a second Bulbasaur. So we're going to start busting out Lorantis's... Lorantis, I don't know. We'll get the big one down. We'll get the small one down. And then we will uh sycamore here. We just tried to tried to evolve the fully evolved one, got it. Okay, cool. How do we get no energies? It's always interesting when that happens. Always confusing when it happens game after game after game. <laughs> uh, what can I do here? Because I don't think I have anything else that draws cards that's not a supporter. So we have four energies, but we play 11. So we have six energies hiding. Literally hiding from us. Let's nest ball to search them out. Make sure we have that many in the deck. We have six energies hiding from us. We don't have any Pokemon that'll draw supports, do we? Answer is no. No, we do not. Okay. Uh, best thing I can do here is start building up Bulbasaur. Everything on my back line I want to protect. So I guess I gotta rely on Lele, Lele to take a hit. Because I think they'll have to put a lot of energy down to take out Tapu Lele. That surprises me so much that I whiffed an energy. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, with only 19 cards left and six of them, that's almost that's almost half of it is energies. And I whiffed it. How? It's okay, our opponent has every answer they need. Guard of War is a beast. They're just waiting to pull that Ace Arola to be able to pull that Guard of War back up. There they go, they got all the energy they need. 30, 60... Uh, 90, 180, 180 damage right there. And 
what is our response? Probably nothing. We don't have anything right now. We'll throw Bulbasaur up there. We get the energy. Wow, yeah, there's not much I can do here. I'm screwed here. Losing Lele made it where all I have to do is take out Lorantis. Which is the only thing I can take out it. I can put one grass energy on it and hit it for 100. But that's just not enough. Unfortunately, this is where that stacking would have been useful. Well, 100, 100, and 40. But he has 200 and crazy amount of HP. Uh, let's see. Do we even have a Lele in here? We have one more Lele. What's our supporter we want? Probably Ace Roller, right? No, we don't have Ace Roller. We'll grab a, a Sycamore for next turn. Oh, I needed that float. Oh, I can still play it. Okay, good. I need that float, though. Yeah, I don't have another way to replace that. Okay, Ivy, so you got this. Take this hit. Hope they don't have a Guzma. <laughs> Can't believe this one's surviving by 30 HP. How much can Lele do to this right now? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. Plus the 20 from itself. 140, 180. See, even Lele can't take out Gardevoir. Gardevoir is just crazy when it has that much energy on it. Only another Gardevoir can take it. it does 180 damage on its own. Let's see, I think I'm stuck doing this. I'm building up that energy. I have two Gardevoirs already, jeez. Uh, this is my last stand. I lose, though. Perfect numbers. That means that they're going to come back and wallop me. Because that's the equivalent to that. So I think this Gardevoir has me right here. Did he even give me the two prizes for that? I don't know. I don't know what I picked. I grabbed something. All I have to do is take out this Lele, which just means all I have to do is attack. I'll give them a well-played, good game. Uh, you didn't need to do that. You already had it. Well-played, you have a good deck. You already had it with Lele. Guzma's just gonna get you. You just need to attack. I don't think they realize that because they don't understand how Venusaur's ability works. But Gardevoir can take out Lele right now. But they are going after Lorantis because it's 100 HP. But Gardevoir could have taken out Lele right there, just so you guys know. Oh, I forgot about that challenge. So there you go. That's how you lose to Gardevoir. You get some big attacks in, but uh, they end up just taking more prizes than you. Um, I had a second Gardevoir down really low, like only 40 HP left.
but just had no way of uh, pulling it out. So I think I'll leave it there at that. Uh, I know not the best match, but uh, it's what we could come up with. Um, I still think this this deck has potential, but it just it just felt a little bit shy today against a big, kind of the top deck in the format. Um, I don't know what you could really change to change that. To be honest, it just how it kind of played out. I guess I could have held on to my choice bands more. Maybe that would have. But I was still shy by 10 damage, like a Kui maybe. But um, I mean, this deck runs pretty smoothly. I like it a lot. So if you guys want to test it out, try it out. You know, the um, deck list will be down in the description. Feel free to copy it. Get on PTCGO, paste it, and then uh, play with it to find your perfect uh, Lorantosaur. Um, remember, hashtag Lorantosaur if you guys like this deck. And I will see you guys on the next video. This has been Dapper Drabby, but I'll bid you guys a Lola. Bye-bye.